Imagine your husband tweeting to the world that marrying you was the worst mistake he's made in his life. I'm almost scared, like, you don't want to do life with me. It was so dramatic. What she said was so valid, and he knows she's right. So instead of commenting on what she said, you're gonna make it about how you perceive. He ain't ready to be married. He ain't ready to forsake all others, be faithful to one. He's not ready to get married. Like, why they get married so fast? You can really fall in love with the idea of a person and generally not even like the reality of the person. It's so spiritual and it's not spiritual at all. So men that see women as, as a trophy will never generally respect you. Codependents, women in relationships with narcissists will try whatever they can to make this guy happy, to make this man love you and respect you. And it's never enough. A narcissist will never ever be able to love you the way you're supposed to be loved. They don't deserve you, but they'll act like you don't deserve them. I want better for my girls, like, I want better for you guys. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Hope you guys are doing well. So today we're going to be taking a deep dive into Erica Mena and Safari's relationship. I basically wanted to do this video to show you guys narcissism on full display. A lot of you guys may have experienced narcissist relationships. You may be in narcissist relationships, narcissistic marriages. And I really wanted to show you guys visually what it looks like and almost break it down part by part. So we're going to be watching a clip from VH1's YouTube channel and it basically shows the start, middle and finish of Erica Mena's relationship with Safari. For those of you that don't know what narcissism is, you're going to see it on full display in today's video. So I'm going to be stopping and starting the video. I'm going to be watching it with you guys. If you wanted to watch the whole thing and then come back and watch this, I'll put the link down below. If not, we will watch it together and I'll be talking through all the points. What you will see in this video is the three stages of narcissism, okay? And that is idealization, devaluation and rejection. I believe that Erica Mena in this situation is definitely, definitely, definitely a victim. But even when there is a victim, there is some personal responsibility that can be taken, whether that's missing red flags in the beginning. I think that codependents attract narcissists and codependency is not a healthy relationship style. And it's usually down to, of course, as always, past trauma and your upbringing as well. How typically women become codependent and attract narcissists in the process. So as much as I want to really talk about Safari's narcissism, I want to also point out what Erica could have, should have, should have, would have, could have, and I'm not blaming her in the slightest, and I'm not blaming any of you guys that may be in those relationships or have experienced that, but I think the only way that we can grow and make better decisions is if we learn from our mistakes. So for those of you that don't know, Erica Mena is a reality TV show. She actually started out um, doing like modeling, she used to be in a music video, all that kind of stuff. And Safari is um, Nicki Minaj's backup dancer. <laughs> Safari is um, a rapper, an artist, dancehall artist, I don't know really what he does. He is famously known for being Nicki Minaj's um, hype man and ex-boyfriend. It's going to be an interesting but fun video. Obviously it's going to be very very serious, however, grab a glass of wine, grab a drink, grab some snacks and let's deep dive into this video. <laughs> Men of Mondays are back and it's better than ever and I'm ready to get married to the love of my life. I've loved hard for so many years to all the wrong people but this time I'm in love and this is absolutely the one. Okay, I have loved hard for so many years to all the wrong people. And I just wanna first start off by saying, whenever I hear women say that they love hard, um, it's a red flag to me, because I think that our, a lot of our ideas of what love is, isn't actually love at all. We almost get swept away in the beginning stages of infatuation. And what we call love is actually infatuation. And infatuation and idolizing a person. People who say, you know what, like, I just love hard. Like, that means you're loving hard without actually using your head. And I've got a book coming out very soon, which is gonna basically break this down to the T. What a lot of people um, call love is actually being drunk, like drunk on a high. 
And what you will find with most narcissists and also codependents is that they rush in so fast and they rush in with all of their emotion. As you've heard her say, this is the one. She's so certain, she's so sure. Why? Usually because the person is so different from what we've experienced before. And sometimes when we meet someone that is so different from what we've, we've experienced before, we let all our defences down. We let our defences come down so fast. And I advise anybody, even if someone's showing you something different, keep your guards up. We only got three weeks, and this is going to be the wedding of the century. Can we get into how stunning Erica Menor is? I mean... Hey. Get ready. I know, but we gotta do some stuff first. Time. I met Erica on a show we did called Scared Famous. If Erica goes home, the girl who I'm falling in love with is gone. That's how I'm looking at it. If I lose, I don't get to wake up and see her every day. Oh, Safari. I saw a lot of me and Erica, and y'all know how much I love myself, so how could I not want to be with me in a female version? I really I'm about to break out in height. <laughs> this man says, you know how much I love myself. So how, how could I not love a female version of myself? Guys, this is not a compliment. He did not say, and I know some people will be like, oh, it's only words. The man said, no, words mean a lot. And we have to learn to start reading into what people say and not taking it at face value because that is not a compliment. So complimenting someone is telling them about what's good about them. Making a compliment about you is not love. Like if someone was, if someone says, oh, I love Brini because she makes me feel good. That's not a compliment to me. It may be good for you, but that's not a compliment for me. A compliment would be, she's so kind, she's so caring, she's so loving, she's attentive. And of course, these are the things that you benefit from, but it is about me and not about you. This guy just blatantly said, you know how much I love myself. Let's just say that back. Oh, Safari. I saw a lot of me and Erica, and y'all know how much I love myself, so. I saw a lot of me in her. Oof. And if you've been following his channel for any amount of time, you know I talk about this a lot because people don't love you, they love how you make them feel they love you for what you do for them. Like that is not love. And it might sound cute to a woman to feel like, oh, I'm the female version of him. It might sound cute, so you may miss these little cues, but that's, it's not a compliment is what I'm saying. And that's that the number one red flag that shows how obsessed Safari is with himself. Like you got a banging, beautiful woman. You couldn't even give her one compliment. How could I not want to be with me in a female version? All right, we got a few minutes, like 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 three and a half. To do what? Mm. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. There were guys lined up at Erica's door. Every girl in her DM trying to get with her. When... Are you listening to this? Okay, first thing I want to say is that lust can feel like love, and I know lust is fun but it never ends well ever because you cannot sustain a relationship based on lust lust is very very short term and lust runs out secondly and this, this video is gonna sound like i'm picking that safari but i bloody am picking that safari i'm dissecting everything every word every look every action i am dissecting him because i feel like doing that is going to help you moving forward in your relationships in the future. This man still has not talked about the qualities of Erica Mena of why he wants to marry this woman. He's talking about the women and the men, that, cause I think she's bisexual, um, the women and the men that are lined up to date Erica, but I've got her, I want her. So men that see women as, as a trophy in that sense will never genuinely respect you because a trophy is about the winner. The trophy in itself doesn't have any value. The trophy is the winners. It's for the winner to show around, to parade around like, look what I got, I won this, look how great I am. I've got this trophy woman on my side. And no matter what you think about Erica Mena, there's no doubt she's a successful, beautiful woman. And I guess any man would be excited and delighted to have someone like her 
on their arm. And again, that may seem like a compliment to you that your man is so happy that he bagged you. It might be an ego boost, but that is saying more about him and what he sees and what he values than about you. He values the validation from other people. I knew that the moment they these two got together, I was like, he wanted someone that would look good next to him. He wants to be this Jay-Z and Beyonce, Kanye and Kim power couple. And it's for him and for most narcissists, it's all about image. It's all about how they look, okay? When Rich found out I was with Erica. How many times did I ask? Ask me what? If you were with Eric. Safari, come on, man. And he started acting like he wanted to jump across tables and fight me. Don't talk about somebody like that. Doing? She's not here. <laughs> persevere through all the BS and the hate, all me and Eric had to do is live in our own bubble. I love you. You know how much I love you. <laughs> Being with you, like, I'm, I finally get the love that I, I always used to give, always wanted. Thank you for being so good to me. Like, even after my dad died, like, the way you just came and just... That's why I say, like, to you all the time, like, I feel like he sent you to me because it was just, like, I lost him and then it was you, my father. What I want to say is that there are times in our lives when we are vulnerable, and us women, us codependents, I'll say us because... Is something that I struggle with for sure. There's always a moment in our lives where we are in a vulnerable position, whether that's a family member, parent died, you lost something, your last relationship ended, or you're just not feeling good. That puts you in a vulnerable position, right? And hands up anyone that can attest to this, the amount of mistakes you've made and the people, the wrong people that you let in your life because you were vulnerable, because you were weak, because you, you wasn't on high alert, because something tragic happened or something bad happened to you and you wasn't fully there. And sometimes when you're so low and someone comes in and swoops you up, you look at them like, you just saved me. You are my savior. I was speaking to my friend Tiffany Buckner on the phone the other day and she basically says something that will never leave me. She said, the enemy creates a need in you and then sends someone to, to fill it. And obviously we know the enemy, the devil does not send anyone that is good for us, right? God sends what is good for us. The enemy perverts that and sends someone that looks good for us but isn't good. So Erica was at a, in a vulnerable position at the start of the relationship which gave Safari and his narcissistic ass a, a window and a door to kind of swoop in and be that for her. And so it's not, there's nothing wrong with someone being there for you, but manipulative people like this can really see a weakness and then and try and fill it. So if you are going through something in your life, this is not the time to pursue a relationship. It's not the time to be able to, to really differentiate and to discern, is this the right person for you? Because if you can look back at your life, you can see that the, the moments that you made the worst mistakes was because you were down bad. Like you was, you was doing bad. We found out he had cancer in February, then we lost him shortly after. In some spiritual crazy way, my heart tells me he sent Safari to me. Even King loves you. And obviously, I'm only commenting on this because their relationship has gone south. But hindsight is 2020, and this could have easily worked out. Having said all of this stuff, this relationship could have worked out and they could have been married 20, 30 years. I doubt it based on everything I'm about to talk about in this video. but. Let's say the relationship did work out. I wouldn't be picking it apart like this. Awesome shortly after. In some spiritual crazy way, my heart tells me he sent Safari to me. My, in some spiritual way, my heart told me that her dad that passed away sent Safari to her. If only she knew. Sometimes we can spiritualize our emotions and make it seem like it's like 11-11 chant, like, um, what do they call it? Like alignment, transition. Like we can over spiritualize our emotions, and women do this very, very well. And it, we can delude ourselves into convincing us that this person is the one. And we can make it so spiritual, and it's not spiritual at all. It's not. But women, we do this really well, and so we have to really be careful of our imagination and what we think, and trying to spiritualize everything because it's sometimes it's not that deep at all. Even King loves you. I know. So I'm gonna be like a real stepfather. Done a great job so far. And I really think you'd be like a great father too one day. 
<laughs> Sorry, look at look at look at that smile. Sorry, there's something about Safari that is so insincere, and there's there's particular guys that I just cannot cannot be with because I'm a heart person, right? And I can I can always tell if someone's sincere. And Safari just just does not put from his drawn on um, hairline to those teeth, like he just doesn't look sincere to me, like at all. And so I believe that this is the stage of idealization. He's idealized Erica and um he's going along because like i said the honeymoon stage the beginning of a relationship is always going to be magical it's always going to feel so real it's always going to feel so fun and you're going to almost wish that you could hold on to this forever and, it ne and it, it's a honeymoon for a reason everything is perfect not having any arguments like everything is rosy everything is how how you want to feel as a woman a narcissist will give it to you in the beginning this change is your life yeah, that's right. Erica is pregnant, baby on the way. Remy and Pat, you ain't the only one having a golden child. Now we having a rose gold diamond baby. The platinum placenta on the way. Again, not once did he say, I'm so happy to be having a child. I'm so happy that Erica is gonna be a mother to my child. What did he do? He compared it. He compared him, him and Erica having a baby to Remy Ma and Papoose, which is their castmates on the show, having a child. And that their ch his child is gonna be better than everybody else. It's not about the child. It's not about Erica having a child. It's about him and how it makes him look. Because narcissists will even use their children to make them look good. Erica set up a meeting today with a lawyer just for us to go over some pre-wedding stuff. She is the best at getting ahead with this kind of stuff and just making sure that we are on path to keep this wedding straight. Hello. Hey, how are you? I'm Jason Erica. Martin. Hi. Uh, nice to meet you. How are you doing? doing? Nice Safari. to meet you. All right. Have a seat. Let me pull out your chair. Who do you think I I'm just be so anxious to sit nowadays. Okay, so I often meet with celebrity couples before they get married. We can discuss ways to protect your interests and your privacy. So one thing we want to really get into right away is us purchasing our dream home. We want to make sure that everything that we own is insured. Okay, we can make that happen. And then I wanted to start the process to get maybe a prenup situated. Okay, we can have that conversation. Are you ready to have that conversation? I think we should have had that in private first before you... That's why we're here. Do you guys need a minute? Yeah. You're going about this all wrong. We should have had a private convo before you put me in front of some stranger ass lawyer that I never met a day in my life. And but now that's you want to be talking about doing. details for a prenup. No, we should have spoke about this before. So what are you saying? That's you don't want one? Is that what it is? That's not something I ever even thought about. Is this love and something real, or is this a business deal? This like, is obviously something real, babe. Come on. This is the mo Okay, first thing. Narcissists do not like to be embarrassed, okay? The first thing he brought up was, you brought me here in front of this, and he insulted the lawyer. What does the lawyer have to do with your personal business? Like, narcissists do not like to be embarrassed in the slightest. Like, they, they can't they can't deal with it. And the way, he react, the way he's reacting is like, it's not that serious. And I'm sure that there has to have been a conversation about a prenup. Like, he's acting like he didn't know anything about this. And something tells me that she has more money than him, which is why she brought up the prenup, because you're only gonna ask for a prenup is if the person who asks for a prenup has the most to lose um, in the marriage and he's now asking is it about a prenup or is it about love like anyone that won't sign a prenup it shows me that it's not about love because and obviously us normal people we don't really understand about prenups and all that kind of stuff because we don't have, we don't live in that world but if you have a lot of things to lose and if you've worked so hard your whole life to accumulate all these assets you don't want to lose them to someone if a divorce happens so if it generally was about love you wouldn't make a, a scene about it those who have made a scene about a prenup usually are the people that um end the divorce because it wasn't about love it was about money father of my child my fiance the woman i'm supposed to spend the rest of my life supposed to and then she pulls this on me we're weak so on me how dare you getting married but i've been telling everybody how perfect this relationship is 
perfect. I've been telling everybody how perfect a relationship is. No mature person or man that is about to get married will describe a relationship as perfect. We all know that there's no such thing as a perfect relationship. Narcissists like to delude themselves and they like to convince themselves that everything is perfect because they couldn't, they cannot stand when things aren't perfect. They live in a fairy world, which is why when something real happens, they can't handle it. But how are we getting married if you still have doubts? But you also have to understand where I'm coming from. Like I, like what I experience. What you, I'm letting you know. If you cheat on me, there's no saving anything. I get it all. But you sound crazy. If I cheat, you get everything I have. No, we having a baby together. I'm locked in no matter what. Not locked in no matter what. Like I hate when people draw like false equivalents. Like no. You're not locked in because you have a baby. You're locked in when you sign a prenup. And the way that he even reacted to like the whole cheating thing, it just shows that like he he ain't ready to be married. He ain't ready to forsake all others, be faithful to one. He's not ready to get married. Why are you coming at me with this type of BS? I'm not trying to like make any problems for our Poor Erica. Like if anyone knows Erica from past seasons, she's usually like turned up. And you can just see how she's like trying to be rational about things and trying to keep the peace and kind of like silencing her voice in order to keep the peace with someone that is clearly unreasonable. Our relationship at all. In all honesty, I didn't know how to talk about it. Like I just want to be protected, that's it. I love you and I do want to marry you. Like look how she's crying and like having to convince someone like are you guys seeing what i'm seeing like like being of a narcissist will make you doubt yourself and it will make you have to bend over backwards to convince the person of your love and your genuinity because they don't have genuinity they're not genuine i just want you to understand where i'm coming from like my biggest fear is ending up to be a wife that does get cheated on and doesn't know how in the end, I'm being deceived. No, you didn't. <laughs> this is beautiful. I just wanted to make things right. Cussed me out in every corner of the house, so I wanted to bring you. I really cursed you out, but I was definitely frustrated with you. You know why, though, right? Yeah. Of course, and I totally understand. I was wrong for that, and I definitely should have told you about that conversation off rip, and I'm sorry for that. So you do understand that it wasn't an issue that she was invited, it was the fact you made it seem like you never invited her, but really you did. I really didn't mean to be misleading, but at the end of the day, I, I'm sorry that I, I sent something that could have come across like an invite. I gotta get out of my ways of the old safari and be a new husband safari. What my wife feels is what she feels and if she says I'm wrong, I gotta make things right. I apologize. You will never have to worry about anything like that again, okay? Like there's just no sincerity there. Like the words sound nice, but there's no sincerity there. That like there's no, his heart is not talking. <laughs> I really don't think that Safari had anything shady going on. He just got caught in a lie and doubled down and just wouldn't see how it hurt me. This is the beginning of excuses from a, a codependent in a relationship with a narcissist. And be careful not to make excuses for things that are inexcusable. And women, we tend to do this very well. We tend to give men the benefit of the doubt. We tend to make excuses for them. We tend to want them to match up to the picture we have of them in our head and if they apologize we're quick to take them back and i like how erica actually said to him that like, you do see how this is an issue because a lot of narcissists like to kind of like apologize to sweep things under the rug as opposed to genu genuinely be sorry and the only way that you can genuinely see someone's sorry is by change behavior an apology without change behavior is just manipulation and narcissists manipulate all the time They'll tell you whatever you want to hear to get past all of the bumps. But seeing all this, I could see that the message got through. Trust is everything. And even though it isn't easy, this is definitely the way to build it. It wasn't supposed to be so cold. <laughs> you want your hat? No, that was kind of cool. <laughs> so this isn't the only surprise. Can I do it first? Close your eyes. Okay. All right. Okay, open. 
Miami. Marriage is all about family. Okay, so they're still prior to marriage. She's pregnant. They're still in the love bombing stage. And for those of you that don't know what love bombing is, is it's basically where someone will basically like over the top like love bomb you. Let's let's bring up the actual definition. Love bombing is an attempt to influence a person by demonstrations of attention and affection. It can be used in different ways and for either positive or negative purposes. Psychologists have identified love bombing as a possible part of a cycle of abuse and have warned against it. Love bombing to me is like a smokescreen. Like you give the person everything that they want. You've already studied the person, you know what they like, and you're going to try your best to do everything and go above and beyond. Of course, he's already proposed to her a massive ring, gave her another gift, um, another expensive gift to apologize and um, be careful of apology presence and especially online as well where you see all these women especially married women getting all these gifts from their husband on day to day like people aren't getting gifts like that unless it's a special occasion so beware most of the time these guys have done something wrong probably cheated and now by buying their wives presence to hush them up and, be, and silence them. Now narcissists will go through the love woman stage, putting down and discarding over and over and over and over again in the relationship so it's not just and done it's actually that 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 and again that 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 and again that so it kind of wind you into this cycle of being high 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 and low 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 it's not at all so this is the wedding which i found to be when i watched it at the time was so stunning everybody looked so good it's a beautiful wedding it was almost perfect to me beautiful wedding they both got emotional it seemed so genuine let's watch it me myself and i why Bible teaches that perfect love drives out fear. And fear will only suck your relationship dry. Because where there is fear, you can't trust properly. Erica, Jasmine, Madam. I used to dream about you. I wanted you for so long. I used to dream about you. I wanted you for so long. And again, to people that have low self-esteem, or those people that are naive, that again can sound like a compliment. Like, oh my God, this man has wanted me for so long. Like, it can seem like, oh my God, babe. And it kind of reminds me of Kim and Kanye, where Kanye used to say, um, I used to cut out pictures of me and put them on your family Christmas card to kind of put myself into the equation. And there's nothing normal or sane about dreaming about someone and wanting to be with someone for so long whilst you entertain other women. This is part of the idealization. Like I said, Erica Mena is a stunning, successful woman. She, she looks great. She seems great as a person. Knowing what I know now and being the age I am now and having an experience what I've experienced now, you don't know me until you know me. You can look at my videos, you can watch my videos, you can idealize me, you can idealize me from afar. You can have all these imaginations, I'm talking about men or whatever. You can like have this idea of who Brini is and then actually get what you think you wanted and actually feel like this person does not match up to the idea in my brain. Because the person in your brain does not exist. I was a figment of your imagination. I was the ideal woman for you in your imagination. I could not do any wrong. I did not poo. I did not piss. 
I did not get angry. I did not hurt your feelings. I didn't do anything. So in your mind, this person that you created of me is a perfect image that I could not possibly live up to. And that's where the idea of loving the idea of a person comes from. You can really fall in love with the idea of a person and generally not even like the reality of the person. So Safari so saying I used to dream about her, I don't know how true that is, but it does go back to the whole idealization of a person and um, Erica didn't stand a chance against that imagination and they always tell you like don't meet your idols like don't meet your idols because they're gonna let you down right the idea in your mind of a person isn't who they are now thank you for giving me the opportunity to actually take me serious <laughs> and for those of you that don't know like they met on a show and he basically hunted her down. She wasn't feeling, feeling, <coughs> you thought I was feeling you? Um, she didn't, she wasn't really feeling him in the beginning. She gave him a chance. And there's a messaging giving a guy that's been chasing you a chance. And it really does go back to the whole idealization. They have an idea of you that's not real. They show you how you're supposed to be loved. Everything before today, none of that matters. That's cute. Show you how you should, you deserve to be loved and everything behind before that today doesn't matter. It sounds amazing if it was true. I love you so much. You have filled my life with so much joy and you have given me a sense of peace I have never known. Although today marks the start of the rest of our lives, one lifetime with you can never be enough. God made sure I was yours. And I'm devoted to you in every way. I marry you with no hesitation or no doubt. I take you as you are. Pay attention to Safari's face, like throughout the whole thing, there's no emotion. Like when he was saying his vows, she was connecting with him, like looking in his eyes, like I'm feeling you, I'm here with you, I'm here. She sent her vows, she's all snotting and everything. And his eyes are just like this. Narcissists don't, don't have emotion. They don't, they don't know where to locate their heart unless they're using it to manipulate you. Are loving you for who you are now and for who you have yet to become. From this day forward, you will never walk alone. Amen. Wipe, wipe your bogeys. I'll ask rings. I do. I do. Let these rings be a seal of your faith and of your mutual affection. Also, by the way, like, no offense to any of your husbands, <laughs> if you're watching this, that have worn white like i'm not sure i know where i stand like okay maybe a white jacket but safari why are you wearing white why you want to be a woman why you want to be the price so bad like let erica have her moment like why are you wearing white bro like that, that to me is like like all the glitter on the sh on the on the blazer like husbands like that that i don't know what it is like let me know if you feel what i'm saying but husbands that try to steal the limelight for the bride on her day, I don't know. Like, there's nothing wrong with looking nice. Like I said, like maybe like a black, a white suit jacket or whatever. But to be just as blinged out as the bride, like it's giving co competing. I pronounce you husband and wife. <laughs> you may kiss the bride. <laughs> They look good together like no doubt about it handsome guy beautiful woman i can't believe it i'm mrs safari samuels <laughs> it's like it's here it's here to stay <laughs> Snap, come on. i'm not saying this is true i'm not saying this is fact or whatever but some women see getting married as well wow, someone i'm worthy and like if your worthiness is tied to getting a ring on your finger you're never gonna feel happy because you're worthy 
whether you have a ring on your finger or you don't have a ring on your finger. Um, and some women just want to be chosen, but don't be so stuck on being chosen that you don't actually choose who you want to be with. Everybody snap! A lot of women settle, and I don't think I'm ready for that conversation. Like, a lot of women settle for who they want as opposed to choosing who they want to be with too. You have to go both ways. I've been crying. I've been an emotional wreck all day. Now, it's time to party. Um, so right now, I am super panicking. Like, I cannot freaking believe this. I just had to fight everything last minute, so now I'm just sitting here, and I'm waiting for my boy to pick me up. And like, this is crazy. Yes, thank you, thank you. All right. To my unborn. I can't wait to meet you. The world's yours. I'll never mislead you. We here waiting, anticipating. Can I just say that Safari is so goofy that a lot of people don't like I think when when he was in love and hip hop people warmed to him because they're like he's so stupid. But and like the class clown is is funny, but they're never gonna really like succeed in life because like they're too busy being funny than actually getting educa <laughs> actually getting education. But it's like Safari gets away with a lot of things because he's funny. Um, but funny is not, you don't want to be in, in a relationship with someone that is funny. In the sense, do you know what I mean? It's his funny translates to immaturity when in a relationship. Look she's smiling too. Changing, just like all the colors, just like all the others, got too close. We're only year one in my Okay, okay, okay. This stage now we're going into is called devaluation. Like, there's no reason why I'm not in bed with my husband. God knows I do cry myself to sleep when we sleep in separate rooms. I'm at a breaking point, and that's the scary part because the Scorpio in me is once I give up, you know, there's no getting me back. I'm hard you love. Like, he almost seems fed up. I feel like I haven't seen you in a while. Yeah, I know. I feel like you're my roommate. I've been sleeping in my studio. Is it fulfilling? It's been, um... Does it hug you back? Does it what? Does it hug you back? No, but I've been able to be... Calm. Calm? Yeah. Calm from the hell you've created? I haven't created hell. No? This goes back to this whole be his peace. Like, it's the immaturity for me. Like, you can't create hell and then expect someone to be your peace while you're taking them through hell. It just doesn't work like that. And notice how he's not going to take any accountability. I just feel like you right. Narcissists are allergic to accountability. The hell you've created? I haven't created hell. No? I just feel like you act very different from before we got married. You just... Yeah, because... It's changed a lot. You changed a lot. Narcissists don't want you to change from the picture in their mind that they have of you. Even if you're the reason why they have changed. So maybe the super sweet, super caring, super there for Safari, 100%, super worship Safari, kisses butthole, Erica Mena has gone. The girl's had a child. The girl is like busy. The girl has to deal with you. But now you're mad because she's changed. And now because she's changed, you change. Because the fantasy in your head of who this person is has been shattered. Now, narcissists do not know how to deal with this new person sitting in front of them. So what they'd rather do is run, detach themselves from you, as opposed to sitting down, having a conversation like a mature 
person and figuring out, figuring out what happened, where did we go wrong? I feel really neglected by you. I feel like you don't take the time to be into me like you used to. You forget, you know, about me. Like, you don't even think sometimes on the weekends to let me sleep in. You forgot about me. And this is why I said lust runs out. And as you can see, it's only been one year, one year into their relationship and the lust is running out. And look at Safari, does not care. And you take care of mommy. You don't even think, let me just fold these clothes that, you know, she washed for me. I know they're my underwear. Like you just, you're just so oblivious and so in your own world and you forget that you're supposed to be my other half. We're supposed to be a team. Yeah, well, we're definitely not a team. Doesn't feel like it. I wouldn't take our wedding pictures and put it in the garbage. For what? What the hell were you thinking when you did that? You just tweeted to the world that I'm marrying me was your biggest mistake and you worried about me dumping wedding pictures that I can't Yeah, because that's see. personal. That's real yeah, life. And so is that's real that's... life. You tweeted something. So it's not real life. Like, Let me get into this tweet. And I remember when he posted this. He said, I mean this from the bottom of my heart. Getting married was one of my biggest mistakes and it will never happen again. Imagine your husband tweeting to the world that marrying you was the worst mistake he's made in his life. And from that, you react by taking the wedding photos and putting it in the bin. Because clearly, if the, if the marriage means nothing to you, then why should it mean anything to me? But as you can see, Gaslighting 101, he's gonna make this issue a her issue. But there's no smoke without fires. He started a fire, now he's hiding his hands and he can't even accept responsibility for what he did. He's saying that Twitter is not real life, this is real life. It's all confusion. And if you will know, it's like, Erica's always like this. And the narcissist will have you very confused. Like, you're having to think like, am I the crazy one? Am I the drama? Like, you're having to think like, am I nuts? They'll make you second guess yourself a lot because you just can't, nothing that they do makes any logical sense at all. So is That's real life. That... You tweeted something. So it's not real life. Like, are you even remorseful for the public humiliation? For like, how you're making me feel? What are you putting me through? No matter what's in jeopardy for my husband, it, there's still no click. You asked for my hand in marriage. You asked for this family that we've created together. And now that you have it, it's not interesting enough for you anymore. I never said that. How about that? I never said that, but that's exactly how you feel. And there's nothing worse than somebody selling you a dream. The feeling of being deceived by your husband, by the person that has committed themselves to you and, you and 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 that have made you commit yourself to someone that isn't even real. Like the deception is just out of this world. Like when you make comments about like, how you don't want to have any more kids. That has nothing to do with you. I didn't realize having a kid was this much work. So that's why I said I don't want no more kids. It's a lot of work. I didn't know it was this much work and we don't have any help. I didn't know it was this much work because you don't live in the real world. Like you like, Safari likes the idea of things, the big house, the beautiful wife, the cute kid. But when it comes down to it, he's like, oh, this is what I wanted? Yeah, this is what you got, nigga. And now you don't want it anymore? That's self-sabotage 101. Do you not like being married? Well. I'm almost scared like, you don't want to do life with me. It's so dramatic. What she said was so valid. And he knows she's right. So instead of commenting on what she said, you're going to make it about how you perceive whether I'm overreacting or whatever. You're going to make it, you're going to back the ball back to me to take the heat off you. He could have genuinely sat and had a conversation and been like, yeah, I don't want to do life with you. Like, if that's his truth, let the woman go. If you're going to sit here after your wife is almost in tears expressing herself to you, you're going to say, you're so dramatic. That's gaslighting. Us talking one-on-one -on -one is a waste. You need to talk to somebody and you just- Girl, this girl's got the patience of a saint. Could not be me. The cookie jar would be up against his head. 
just need to figure your out. Oh, what about you? I'm fine. <laughs> what? You don't know how to do real life. It's not a rap video every day. What's real life I don't know how to do? This. <laughs> this. You can't have an adult conversation. Narcissists idealize, idealize their life, but their life is not based on reality. It's not based on truth. It's all a fantasy. And the fantasy is that they're the star of the show. They're the center of their own universe and they can't see how their actions affect anybody else. I mean, at the end of the day, everybody has problems. Everybody has demons. It's just a matter of you're mature enough yeah, to I, face well, them. I don't, well, whether I have problems or not, I don't, <laughs> I don't come out aggressive. You're aggressive, what? and I don't like the aggressive side. What? You don't like the aggressive side? I don't but like you, it. You stir up the pot. Don't and when matter. it starts overflowing and boiling over, ooh, it's too hot. It's a fiery. Get over it. Oh, get over it. Or don't get over it and do what you got to do. So dismissive. Imagine this is your husband, guys. Like, and for some of you, this is your husband. So dismissive. Like, I want better for my girls. Like, I want better for you guys. Like, that's the only reason I do these videos. I want so much better for you guys. And it's sad to me <coughs> that many of you will go through life having not experienced true love. And that's sad to me. You get this and different versions of this, but you'll never get true love, someone that loves you loves you enough to hear you out, to listen, to be attentive, to care about what you're saying to them. Like no one deserves to be treated like this. And I heard Safari's growing up with all women. It's either he's been spoiled or he knows how women are and he used that to his advantage to get Erica. And three, he doesn't have a father example. He doesn't know how to treat a woman. He hasn't seen his father show love to a woman. So he might like the idea of having a family, but he just isn't that guy. He's not a husband. Safari's not a husband. I think anyone could have, like, watching... I didn't really watch Love and Hip Hop, but I think everyone can see that's a boy. Okay, so what do I gotta do then? Whatever you gotta do to make yourself happy. Do? Don't talk to your... Like, this isn't... You're not in... Oh, why did they get married so fast? <laughs> like, why did they get married so fast? They should have been dating for about... They should have been dating for a long time. And then it would, you would have avoided all of this because he's talking to her like less than a girlfriend. But well, this is your whole wife. I don't know. Do what you want to do. Do what you need to do. He doesn't. He, Safari's over this. Okay. You don't care. I don't care. He's, Matt, he said he doesn't care. Cool. Are we done? It's so embarrassing. Shrug his shoulders, like, deal with it. Ugh. Who the hell are y'all? Your Omar want me to bring you on over. This is what I'm talking about. Pull up to my driveway, have girls come blindfold me. Maybe Erica's trying to really turn it up a notch. It's time to get it cracking. Take me to my bedroom, ladies. Okay, take off your blindfold. Take you to where, ladies? You're married. Oh. So much to say about this. Oh, okay. So what I've noticed is that codependents, women in relationships with narcissists will try whatever they can to make this guy happy, to make this man love you. Whether that's giving him his wildest fantasy, whether it's bringing in other women, whether it's doing this, whether it's slaving away, bending over backwards, doing whatever you can to make this man love you and respect you. And it's never enough. This woman has had to give him what he loves the most, himself. A whole party, him in the background, his, his name there, brought Jamaica to him, for him. And this will appeal to him for like, 
a day, half a day, four hours. It will never ever be enough to quench that deep pit that isn't a narcissist. You can never give a narcissist enough. Never. Cool me, cool me down. I beg you, cool me down. I beg you, cool me down. Because who long had the ice like a little ping wing? Me just live like paradise. Come to me once, come see me twice. You're my little me, I mean, do it burn. Cool and with pizza eyes. Look at this. Married life can be fun and exciting. Like, this is an amazing energy that is brought to the house. We're happy, it feels good. Life doesn't have to be us arguing and bickering and, and stressing all the time. We need more of this. We need more of this. More, I need you to make it about me every single day. That's the only time I'm going to be happy. Forget your feelings, Erica. Make it all about me. That's sick and twisted. This is crazy. <laughs> I love Jamaica and I love myself. <laughs> and for you to have <laughs> both combined. I love, you can't get any more narcissistic than this, I'm sorry. Like this is like an obvious, that like, this is narcissism on steroids in plain sight. I'm speechless. Come here. I'm speechless. Have you, have you heard this man say thank you? Have you seen him hug her? This is why I love Erica so much. It's like, you know how, I, how bad I've been wanting to go to Jamaica. I ain't been able to go to Jamaica in over a year because of the pandemic. You had them come bring a whole big jerk jump pond for me. The thought and the detail in this. This is what the hell I want my marriage to be. This is why I love Erica. Again, what she does for him. When she does stuff for him. Oh, damn. Are you happy? I'm, I'm blown away. This top everything you've ever done for me. <laughs> oh, wow. Really? Yeah. Are you happy? She has to ask him. He's not even saying, babe, this is so sick. Narcissists are hard to please. And then he said that this tops everything you've ever done for me. This woman just had your child. <laughs> All right, well, I'm going to leave you guys. You know what? Me like Erica and Safari together. And I'm praying that the baby will bring them closer together. Damn, this is so nice. Love it. Aww. <laughs> I just wanted to do something because there's still no thank you in sight. I know uh, things have been weird for us lately. So I've heard you make statements like having the babies, a lot of work, and oh, it definitely it's lighting up maybe this much, but the first year is definitely a lot. Well, yeah, and then I just feel like we lost a lot of what used to keep us so happy and, you know, so infatuated with each other. So I don't know, I just wanted to do something. Look at his face. Where's the emotion? Where's the joy? Where's the happiness? Oh. Thing to- This is still part of the value stage, by the way. Like, just get back into why we fell in love in the first place. I don't want to feel like I regret telling him. And it's sad to say, because this is my husband, like I'm supposed to be ecstatic, like I'm supposed to be like, I can't wait to see his face, oh my God, how is he gonna react? I'm actually more scared, and that puts me in a dark place. Finally, my husband actually is sitting across from me, and I get the feeling he's actually grateful, so I'm like, okay, this is definitely the perfect time, because I haven't seen this man smile this hard in a very long time, besides when we're in the bedroom. So, let me seize the moment, because if not, Who's to say what the hell's gonna happen with this man? Um, I wanna show you something that I just found out. His face, even before she announces the news, like, he's not happy. So what, you're pregnant? We're pregnant. How many weeks are you? 23. You know, he asks her, how many weeks are you? So he can like, well, get rid of it. Like he's determining like, like how, how you got a whole husband and you're announcing to him what you're supposed to do in marriage. Like have babies, like procreate, like continue life. And your man's sad about it. Like I could not, that would kill me. I can't, and this is only a glimpse of what Erica get, goes through or was going through on a day to day with this man. Kills me. 
say something. You know how I feel. About? About having more kids. You can just tell Erica is trying so hard. Like, this is not her, like. A narcissist will make you, like, a shell of a person. Like, you won't even, you're not even yourself. Are you sad? Are you, like, upset? I don't know what I am. I felt like we just started getting a rhythm with Machi turning one. I'm going to have to start all over again. Sierra! Is there really anything to say about that? Like, I don't know. I mean, I've never been pregnant. I've never had to share news that I'm pregnant with someone, but I know that's not the reaction that I would want having grown your child in my stomach. I, and she already said that he doesn't do anything anyway. So you're worried about having another child when she's the one that's actually looking after the children anyway? I don't know, it just seems deeper. I, maybe he, maybe for him, it's like he's already thinking about exiting. And so two children now makes it harder for him to leave. Hi. Hi, beautiful. I'm done talking to them. Oh, I'm sorry. Girl, they got a lot going on. Me and Safari was supposed to be leaving from the baby shower to Miami together to have a family getaway. And he asked that I cancel my flight and stay behind. Here we are at a baby shower, my friend through for us. And he's not even acknowledging me or his daughter. He thinks things run on his time. That's not how it works. Right. The energy here, it's not right. I could see and feel and hear all the little knacking and tacking behind my back. So we're at a disgusting place right now. You beautiful. What's up? What's up? Hey, this is what I'm talking about. You've been some serious talking about dropping a hammer like a rap. You know he texts me? Yeah. He texts me, I will forever put myself before you. Oh. Yeah. So let's separate. Are you serious? Yeah. My husband told her, I will forever put myself before you. <laughs> I mean, not, most narcissists will not tell you that. They will just show you that they'll always put themselves before them. But for your husband to tell you that, you're not my priority. Like, I'm the most important. Right. <laughs> <coughs> that is how a narcissist feels. You are not their number one priority. Never ever will you be. Nor their children. Nothing else can compete with them because they are their own God. They're God to them and they want you to be they want you to see them as God. But they, in the heat of the moment, in the moment in the night, because he's supposed to get pampers of milk. See, I hear the sick already, and it's like, she want to do all that for a crowd. Because she asked him for pampers and milk, you're, uh -huh. I'm just going to get out of here before I end up saying that I can't be taken back. I'm out here, I'm going to the airport, I'm going to Miami. I ain't trying to be around all this bad energy, so... Where'd he go? He's he leaving his own baby shop. Yeah. He ain't no talking so far in the stand here for his wife. If you ain't gonna say nothing, at least stay just to show your support. Like, man, f*** that. He's done. He, he, he's all the way out. Hi! Hi. We were just talking about you, you know, Tommy. Hi, mommy. Look at Super Mama. Mommy. You always. Girl. What's y'all got going on? I'm just and telling her. her. He disregards and disrespects how I feel all the time and runs away. He's always going to put himself before him. The man left his own baby shower, didn't even speak to the wife or the child. They were supposed to be going on vacation. He's left. Probably got another woman out there. Like, it's just a whole hot damn mess. So you said, mm -hmm. He disregards and disrespects how I feel all the time and runs away. This is part of the scar as well. Silent treatment, running away, like shutting everything down. Like, this is the scar. Like, now he's out. He's actually out and he wants her to know he's out. He's always going to put himself before us. And that's his thing too. When it's bad, he's so quick to, to leave. Oh, I don't play that. I haven't been to the house 
for a few weeks. So this is the first time I've seen Erica since we both filed for divorce. And you know, we just haven't been speaking. We got each other blocked. And so I think there's like a lot that got, went in before this, but obviously this is at the divorce stage. I think she asked for divorce and they went backwards and forwards, backwards and forwards, now they're getting Nothing has been nice about our communication. I just Imagine getting divorced and pregnant with a second baby, like, I feel like he, he, even if she wasn't pregnant, he would have wanted to get a divorce anyway. Like, he was always one foot out the door, probably the moment they got married. Like, he was not, he's not ready to be married at all. I just want our relationship to just be co-parenting, no more arguing, as calm and smooth as possible. You look nice. I'm sure. What's new? You being here. <laughs> Are you happy? I'm not the one who filed. That's what you wanted. A man will push you to file for divorce so he doesn't look like the bad guy. But he wants a divorce, but he's just not going to do it. He doesn't want that responsibility and he doesn't want to be responsible for the end of the marriage, even though you are the one that's caused chaos. But now it looks bad because the woman filed for divorce. And every time I hear men say, oh, but women file 40% of the time, or whatever, whatever the statistic is, like women file for divorce more than men. And it's because, yeah, you're not going to put me through hell and not sign these papers. Like when a woman's fed up, she's fed up. I haven't seen my husband face to face in some time. And as much as I love him, I love me more. We gotta have this conversation because we need it. The main thing is that my kids come first. You know, we gotta get this co-parenting thing figured out. I'm still gonna be around. At the end of the day, whether me and you are together or not, I'm going to still be 100% for my family. How, when you don't have a family now? This is still my family. What is? You don't care if your kids grow up in a broken home. They, they, it won't be a broken yes, home. Yes, it is. You're living somewhere else. I'm living here. That's a broken home. And therefore, I have to suffer because you get to live where you say 20 minutes away, wake up when you feel like it, do as you please, where I have to be around the clock 24-7, a mother and a father when you're not around to our children. I'm weeks away from giving birth to our son. It's you that's out of town. It's me stuck in this house by myself, taking care of our daughter. You know, I definitely take responsibility for the things that, you know, I've done to cause her pain, but... No, you don't. And I hate that blanket statement, like, all the things I've done. No, list the things that you've done. Like, tell me, the th tell us all you've done. The last time I was at the house, I had to call the police because me and her got into an argument and she starts yelling and crying and throwing stuff at me and picking up sharp objects and I just need to protect myself. Look, I'm not gonna lie to myself. The inevitable with me and you is us not lasting. It's not gonna we're not, last we're not gonna you last. no effort. If you love us the way you love you, yes. If you decided I'm going to be a man for mine, yes. But I know that's not the case. And that's why I filed for divorce. I know you would never put us before you, never. This is really up. I feel scammed. So now you're free. Congratulations, you got what you want. You can live your bachelor life. It's not about You can do all of that that you want to do now. Father, and I want us to just be... Yeah, okay. Be amazing for our children. Yeah, okay. She looks at me with so much anger sometimes. It's like, damn. But I know where my heart is. I know what I want to do. I still want to be there and do as much as, you know, I can with the kids. Our son will be born in a couple of weeks so that by the time he comes, I could really fully wrap my head around the fact that I'm gonna be a single mother of two under two. I'm gonna go check on my G. Look at her. You can't say that she's not the victim in this. Like, come on. So, my heart hurts for her, man. I decided I'm going to be a man for mine, yes, but I... Like, it's just so sad. You don't treat your wife like this. You don't treat any woman like this. It's so... 
it's so annoying and frustrating and just so sad. And like I said, this is narcissism on full display. And narcissists are so self-centered. They need admiration. They have entitlement. They think they deserve everything. And they have lo very, very low agreeableness and empathy. As you can see throughout this whole thing, there was no emotion. There was no genuine love and concern for the woman that he chose to marry. Even his tears at the altar were probably personal tears he's probably crying for himself he's probably crying for all the women that he can't be with all the women that he lost <laughs> that's probably why he was crying he wasn't crying because he's so in love with this woman safari was never in love with erica he, because he could not be in love with erica because there's no space for anybody else in his heart because he's full of himself and bob marley said that the biggest coward of a man is to awaken the love of a woman without the intention of loving her. Biggest coward of a man is to awaken the love of a woman with no intention of loving her. He had no intention from the moment he met her to protect, to provide, to take care of her, to, 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 to protect her emotionally, physically. He had absolutely zero intention to do that. He did it for his own ego and he did it for his own self, his own self-esteem. Safari is definitely a colorist. Don't ask me how. I just think he is. Um, most of these are uh, Jamaican. A lot of these Jamaican men are very much colorist, um, but narcissists, they just want the best of the best, even though they're not the best. And it helps with their sense of self to get all these things outside of themselves. That's why you always see Safari dressed up. He doesn't have any inner value. He gets his value from outside. And the problem with getting yourself your value from outside is that even though you have all of these things, because it's not internal, you cannot, you cannot value it. It's impossible for you to value it because you do not value yourself. And there's obviously different types of narcissism. There's over and there's covert. Safari is clearly an over grandiose narcissist, but the covert is probably a lot harder to identify. But I wanted to show you guys narcissism on full display. And like I said, those who get with narcissists have issues with codependency. They just want to be loved. But narcissists will never, ever be able to love you the way you're supposed to be loved. They don't deserve you, but they'll act like you don't deserve them. They'll treat you like lower than low. And one thing about um, grandiose narcissists is all about appearances and how, how things look on the outside. And I hated the show because I feel like everybody kind of stood up for um, him because they like him as a friend but no one really knows how hard it is to be in a relationship with someone that is a narcissist um, and people that are married to narcissists these are some of the signs that I want to read out um, that you may be married to a narcissist narcissists are unfaithful genuinely unfaithful um, their sense of entitlement makes them think that there's always something better they like to control their wife's appearance in another video Erica confessed that when she was pregnant with her first child, the reason why he didn't want her to have another child was because she got so big with the first one. And uh, like I just said, like that should be the, if you love someone, that's the least of your concern. The only thing you're wishing is that your wife is gonna be safe and she has a safe, pre a safe delivery. Not thinking about how she looks, but because narcissists are so self-centered, everything looks bad on them. And narcissists do not want to look bad in any way, shape or form. Narcissists will neglect their emotional needs um, and they have no true connection um, because they lack empathy. They will look at you dead in the eyes even when you're crying and upset and they, they hate your tears. They hate your tears. They don't empathise. To them, it's a burden. Your, your tears are a burden to them. If you have children, um, they may encourage um, your children to disrespect you Obviously, their children are quite young. But I wanted to show you guys this video clip because I just thought that this was so disgusting and sick. And I'm going to skip to half of the video. I need an heir to the throne. You're supposed to be like, as long as it's healthy, long as my wife gets through labor. No, I know that. I know that. But, you know. Like, you have to watch what you say. Like, sometimes I get it. You want to be funny. and, and you're I don't want to be blunt. funny. I'm just very blunt. And, and I'm very but, honest. Do you want to know what it is or not? Okay. What do you feel is in here? Anyway, you're having a son. 
Are you sure? Yeah, she showed me that. <laughs> Safari, pick her up, you freaking idiot. Like, what's your problem? I'm picking up. Uh, she's, she's fine. See, when she's in here with me by herself, this don't happen. This moment is probably setting me up to get ready for what my life is about to be. Me having to hold down my babies by myself, even when they're hurting, because daddy finds it to be funny. But it just proves how immature he is. That was a real dickhead move of you. It's your fault. Shouldn't have had her over there. I should have never had her over there. Yeah. Sorry, shut up. She's here throwing guitars on her head. And you're there laughing at her instead of picking her up. It was funny. I'm completely angry because I, I just feel like everything you portrayed yourself to be in the beginning is nothing what you really are. Ladies, do not have children with men like this. If that man does not love your dirty jaws, he ain't gonna love your child. He ain't gonna love his child. Like how any natural reaction, I don't even care if it's my kid, if a child falls, I'm grabbing the child. And I don't think it has anything to do with just being a woman. Like, where's your heart? How are you saying that a guitar falling on your child is funny? There's no heart here. Another sign of narcissistic abuse, I guess, in a marriage is that only his choices matter. Um, there's no give and take. He only cares about his own opinion, his own feelings, and he does not care about you. He's jealous of other men, um, maybe become possessive, who you're talking to. I didn't like how you talk to that person, yada, yada, yada. They're envious of, the, of their wife's success, so they might try to demean you, play everything down, or you got promotion or it doesn't really matter you're not that good and how many other people got the promotion oh okay how many managers is there at their store like they're gonna downplay your success because they're jealous a narcissist will not listen to you um and all his responses will be about him they will downplay their contribution of taking care of the household and children they'll act like all the things that you do for your kids for your, the house, for the kids, for you. Oh, it's nothing, it's light work. And that's where the lack of appreciation comes in. And that's during the devaluing stage. And the last thing is that he views her as his personal support tool, as in everything is about him. And um, I want you guys to be safe out here. Obviously I don't encourage divorce, but I think God is more concerned about his children not suffering mentally, emotionally, and physically at the hands of a man that cannot love her the way she's, the, she's supposed to be loved and a man does not deserve a wife. Some men do not deserve a wife. Men can't love their wives because they don't love themselves. So I hope this video was helpful. I didn't expect it to be this long. Give us a thumbs up if you enjoy videos like this. I'm trying to switch it up. I have a lot to say about a lot of things going forward. And um, the next, um, uh, the next dissecting video will be of Ray J and Princess. I just want to show you guys visually red flags. It's good me talking about it. If you can see yourself in this, or if you've had experience with this, you will see that like it is hell. It's not nice, and I don't think anyone deserves to go through. So I'm wishing you guys well. These are some of the red flags to look out for in a relationship. I know you guys want romance. I know you guys want to be loved or whatever, but slow down so that you can see the red flags in the beginning. That you don't bypass them and end up married to a person that cannot love you because they never did all right guys make sure you guys give the video a thumbs up and um, subscribe to this channel and i'll see you guys in my next video bye guys